The Sahara Desert is one of the harshest environments on Earth, covering more than 3.6 million square miles or 8.6 million square kilometers across North Africa. It's the largest hottest desert in the world, with temperatures that can reach up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and annual rainfall that averages around 3 inches. It's a region that's incredibly hostile to human habitation. But what if there was a way to transform this barren landscape into something entirely different? What if instead of a desert, there was a sea? That's the idea behind the Sahara Sea, an ambitious plan to create a massive body of water in the heart of the Sahara. Welcome to Top Futuristic. Today, we'll be taking a look at the insane plan to create a sea in the Sahara Desert. Before we continue, please subscribe and ring the bell as it really helps out the channel. Thanks. The concept of a Sahara Sea isn't new. In 1877, Scottish abolitionist and entrepreneur Donald Mackenzie first proposed the idea of a Sahara Sea. As an entrepreneur, Mackenzie set up a trading post along the West African coast and he usually had goods that had to be transported through the Sahara Desert. As you would expect, this journey was long and arduous and had a limited capacity. Although Mackenzie himself had never traveled into Central Africa, which was then known as the Sudan with an Au, he had gotten descriptions of the terrain from nomads and traders that normally traveled through the desert. From the descriptions he received, Mackenzie believed that cutting a channel from the sand-based lagoons north of Cape Juby, which was an area south of a plain referred to by the Arabs as El Juf and flooding, it would create an inland sea of 155,400 square kilometers or 60,000 square miles and provide access to the Niger River and the resources of West Africa. He also believed that the improved access to Central Africa would help liberate the Central African population from the slave trade, which was rampant at the time. However, it turned out that he was incorrect about the elevation of El Jof, which is actually about a thousand feet or 320 meters above sea level. Despite his idea gaining popularity in the press, Mackenzie's project did not receive much investment, and he ultimately had to abandon it and the focus on other projects such as creating the successful Northwest Africa Trading Company and working to promote the end of the slave trade in East Africa. Donald Mackenzie wasn't the only person of his time to propose the creation of a sea in the Sahara Desert. In 1878, one year after Donald's proposal, a French geographer named Francois-Elie Ruder and a diplomat named Ferdinand de Lesseps also proposed the idea of creating an inland sea Ferdinand was no stranger to massive engineering projects as he had worked on the development of the Suez Canal. Ferdinand and Francois proposed cutting a channel from the Gulf of Gaves in the Mediterranean to Chat el Fejij, which would allow the channel to receive drainage from the sea. Ferdinand and Francois pushed for the creation of the sea as they believed that creating the inland sea would improve the weather quality in Europe. The plan by Francois and Ferdinand generated some criticisms with some people doubting the feasibility of the project, and others like Alexander Mitchinson, arguing that flooding large areas would create disease-ridden swamps. The proposal was finally rejected and funding was withdrawn, after initial expeditions of the area, revealed that most of the areas were not below sea level as they had initially believed. Based on this new discovery, Francois and Ferdinand had to change their plans to include a far longer canal and a smaller sea, but the French decided that the project was no more feasible and would cost over a billion francs to complete. To put this in perspective, the initial estimated cost for constructing the Sahara Sea stood at about 30 million. Although Francois and Ferdinand's dream for an inland sea in the Sahara never came to reality, it was brought to life by the author, Jules Verne, when he mentioned the proposal in his 1905 book, The Invasion of Sea. The idea for the creation of the Sahara Sea was revived in the early 20th century by professors, scientists, and engineers, proposing ways to create a sea in the desert. Of note was Project Plowshare, an American-driven project which planned to use nuclear explosions to create the Sahara Sea. Strange as it may sound, Project Plowshare was part of the Global Atoms for Peace, initiative promoted by President Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1953. But again, none of the proposals were ever implemented. In recent years, the idea has gained renewed attention, thanks in part to climate change. And in 2018, the Non-Profit Association Cooperation Road obtained the approval of the Tunisian government to attempt to create the Sahara Sea. 
As the planet continues to warm, many regions are experiencing more frequent and severe droughts. In the Sahara, these droughts are exacerbating an already dire situation. In some areas, entire villages are being forced to relocate, as water becomes scarce. What makes this idea appeal to me even more is the fact that economic gains aside, these people struggling to get access to water for daily activities will be the first people to benefit from the creation of the Sahara Sea. The creation of the Sahara Sea would also provide jobs for unemployed youths while improving the climate of the area. The idea behind the Sahara Sea is to create a massive reservoir of water that could provide a source of drinking water, irrigation, and even renewable energy for the region. Cooperation Road's plan for the Sahara Sea involves creating a canal from the Gulf of Gabes and flooding the Chots just like the 19th century proposal. However, even if for some reason, the Chots couldn't be used as the final destination of the Sahara Sea, many other locations in the desert could serve as the ideal destination for the Sahara Sea, such as the Qatara Depression in Egypt. The Qatara Depression is a large basin that sits about 130 feet below sea level. It's an area that's been studied extensively for its potential as a site for energy production. The Sahara Sea can also be accomplished by creating a canal from the Mediterranean Sea to the Qatara Depression, allowing seawater to flow into the basin and fill it up. At first glance, the idea of creating a sea in the desert may seem insane, but proponents of the Sahara Sea argue that it could have several benefits. Keep in mind also that this is not the first time. A desert has been flooded to create a body of water. The Salton Sea was accidentally created in 1905 when irrigation canal construction workers in Southern California released the waters of the Colorado River into a basin that had previously been dry and even though the lake has significantly decreased in size, since it was first formed, it still remains the biggest lake in the state of California. So why should a sea be created in the Sahara Desert? For one thing, the sea could provide a source of fresh water for the region. In addition to being used for irrigation, the water could also be used to generate hydroelectric power which would provide the region with a source of sustainable energy. The Sahara Sea could also have a cooling effect on the surrounding area. The evaporation of seawater would create a constant supply of cool, moist air that could help to moderate temperatures and increase humidity in the region. But the creation of the Sahara Sea would not be without its challenges. For one thing, there's the cost. While it would have cost less than a billion dollars to create the Sahara Sea in the 19th century, Current estimates could easily place the creation of the Sahara Sea among some of the most expensive engineering projects in history. There are also environmental concerns. Critics of the project argue that the creation of a massive body of water in the desert could have unintended consequences, such as altering local weather patterns and disturbing delicate ecosystems. Despite these challenges, the idea of a Sahara Sea continues to gain traction. In recent years, a number of feasibility studies have been conducted to determine the viability of the project. One such study, conducted by a team of scientists and engineers from around the world, found that the creation of a Sahara Sea was technically feasible. The study concluded that the project would require the construction of a canal, about 50 miles long, along with a number of other infrastructure projects. The study also found that the Sahara Sea could provide a number of benefits to the region, including a source of fresh water, renewable energy, and economic benefits as a result of agriculture and other jobs generated as a result of the sea. The idea of a Sahara Sea is over 150 years old and its story is filled with setbacks over the years that have hindered the idea from becoming a reality. Remember, however, that although the current plans to create the sea are still in the preliminary stages, the reality of finally having a sea in the world's largest and hottest desert may not be so far-fetched anymore. Thanks for watching. Please let us know what you think in the comments and as always, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.